she asked me, do you think I'm crazy for getting around two? I said to her, no, I don't think you are. Maybe 10 years ago, I would have said that, or at least made more diplomatic about it. We're at such a high level of doing BBLs now that things are kind of different. So let's go over sort of her findings from the first BBL, and then we'll go into the reasons why um, we're going to do a second round BBL. Behind the She had her BBL before the pandemic, just before the pandemic. She had a nice shape to begin with. Um, she really had the winning combination. She has a naturally small waist and she had large love handles. You know, sometimes people will tell me, oh, the results of a BBL are not permanent or, oh, these are just temporary. And you can see this is not, this is her own tissue now. So the fat that she has, she's over three years now. The fat that she has is just nice and soft. She has no hard spots, there's no, fat necrosis. Um, it's interesting because we were looking at her post-operative day one photos and you can see she had a little bit more of a hip at that time than she does now. So that's one of the things that we want to focus on on this round is to get a little bit more hip. She feels pretty soft so I think that it's not going to be a problem to get her more hip. We don't have a lot of fat to work with obviously. She's got a little bit of fat still in the back that we're going to use very little in the front and we're going to focus on trying to get more of a hip and she wanted a little bit more projection in in the upper part of her butt as it kind of takes off and sort of getting back to that post-op day one look where this was looked a little bit more uh, that had come in and a little bit more projection here so those are going to be the two areas this is obviously a skinny BBL, um, she doesn't have very much fat to use. And a skinny BBL really just means it's a BBL in somebody that just has enough fat to use. I have to be really careful with every sort of CC of fat that we have so that we can make sure that we can get as much of a hip for her on both sides and a little bit more projection here. And then just kind of, you know, there's all, everyone always has a few little dimples or whatnot. I'm going to try and put some fat. For that fat, I put it in a little bit more superficial, close to the skin, and try and fill in a couple of that little little dimpling. I'm going to be able to use her old scars. Here are scars here. She scarred really well. I don't really even see the other incisions. Probably here, maybe. I would guess that that's where it is. That's about where I'd make it. So she's healed really well. This, these have healed well. These have a little bit of hyperpigmentation, which is a little bit of darkness. I always try to reuse incisions if they're in good locations. Um, sometimes the incisions are not in good locations and so I have to make a new incision. But she's had a previous surgery with me so I'll be able to reuse the same incisions. So that's the plan. Okay, so finished up the lipo. We always re-prep and re-drape after uh, we do that so we get this to be as sterile as we can. The person on the other end of the camera already said, wow, she looks good. Yeah, she looks good already. She already had a BBL uh, around one, and her line is really nice. Here we are in the key area. This is nice. Relipoed this, and now comes really nicely. And I just this is you know again this is a really high level BBL because she already looks good, and we're just kind of really fine tuning it, if you will. But I see like a little flatness here when I'm following that line down. So I'm going to put a little bit of fat here. It's not going to take much. And then I'm going to blend a little bit more in her leg there too. I always want this line to be this OG line, just, just to be smooth. And if I ever see like a little area and hers comes down, looks nice. And then there's just a little kind of in like this. I just, I always want to just fill that in just because I, I'm just always trying to get this silhouette in my mind, follow this OG line. I mean, honestly, I think anyone can do this operation. Just follow the line. It's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you to the, to the promised land. So that's what we're going to do. She doesn't have much fat. Uh, the only fat I have available is about 300 on this side and about 300 on the other side. Um, that's still a significant amount of fat to make a change, particularly somebody who's petite. She's small. Her butt is not big at all. So having, adding a, an additional 300 uh, is going to make uh, a difference. So let's get started here. I just want to show you the, 
this side is injected and this side here is not injected. And so you can just see the, she has a really nice shape here already. And I bet you just see the difference with adding a little bit more volume and a little bit more hip, a little bit more fat here for the takeoff. You can see that she's more full here. Here she's still pretty soft and empty because I haven't injected this side yet. But I just wanted to show you what it was like, the difference between the injected side and the non-injected side. I'm gonna go inject this side now. I had surgery with him three years ago and I loved the wor his work. I wanted to uh, make my body a little bit better and the way I wanted. I came back with Dr. William again because I love how he is. I love how he explains things and he honestly, he's the best.